Jump deep, soul. Hello, everyone. Virginia Tatch here, and I welcome you back to this VOKK TV series to rediscovering and preserving the Kamaikarom identity. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that many people have more knowledge about the Tibetan and their suffering. Unfortunately, there are not many people who know about the Kamaikarom peoples who face the same injustice as the Tibetans. The KKF, Khmer Kampuchea Krom Federation, have done marvelous works to bring the Khmer Krom sufferings in Kampuchea Krom to the international spotlight, especially at the United Nations. Moreover, the KKF also empowers the Khmer Krom youths to join the human rights movement that KKF has been advocating to seek justice for the Khmer Krom. Every year, the Khmer Krom youths representing KKF would attend the United Nations meetings in New York and Geneva. As of today, if anyone wants to learn about the Khmer Krom, they can search Khmer Krom on Google and can find many documents about the Khmer Krom that KKF have published, including the reports that KKF have submitted to the United Nations. KKF has been empowering the Khmer Krom students to start researching the Khmer Krom. Besides helping to let the world know who the Khmer Krom people are and the issues that the Khmer Krom peoples are facing. Not only can the Khmer Krom students learn about their injustice treatment, but can also earn credits for their educational schoolwork. It is my pleasure to interview Kali Nguyen to share about writing his honor thesis about Khmer Krom. Hi Kali, thank you for joining me here today for this interview. Um, so I'm going to ask you first, could you please introduce and tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, first off, I want to thank you, for, uh, Virginia, for interviewing me and providing me the space to have a platform to talk about my thesis that I'm working on. Uh, so my name is Kelly Bohuin, and I'm a fourth year at UC Santa Barbara studying Asian American Studies and Sociology with a minor in Poverty, Inequality, and Social Justice. Um, I'm currently 21 years old and was born and raised in Fresno, California. Um, in terms of what I want to do um, after my undergraduate degree, I'm planning to apply to graduate programs in the fall of 2021 so that I can um, pursue a master's at public health. Um, I'm mainly interested in epidemiology, which is an area that focuses on um, the spread of diseases and how we can prevent it. And um, hopefully in the future, I can work closely with indigenous and ethnic minority communities, both um, in the U.S. and abroad as well. Perfect. I think that you definitely fit well here because <laughs> we definitely can help you, you know, and give you that platform. <laughs> Um, a common question that I like to start with people that I interview who are youth, um, do you happen to know where your parents are from in Campo Chikram, what province? Yeah, so um, my parents are from um, Sapchang province, which is located in the Mekong Delta region of Vietnam. Um, most Khmer Krom folks might know this province as um, Kleang, which is the, the Khmer name that this province goes by for um, anyone who may not know. <laughs> um, I have relatives that mostly live in two villages in this region, and they're known as um, Tsai Kong and, um, excuse me, Bek Dong, which are the Khmer names of those villages. Um, I do have relatives in other places, but these are the two that I'm mostly familiar with. I mean, I'm glad that you know, you know, and you're aware where your parents are from. I feel like it's important for us to have that connection and be able to, you know, when we hear those provinces, we, we know where they're from. So I'm glad to know you do know where they're from. Um, with that, I heard you were working on an honor thesis about the Khmer Krom. Can you let us know what it is and why it is crucial for, you know, for people like yourself to write about the Khmer Krom? Yeah, of course. So um, my honors thesis explores um, the complexities of the Khmer Krom identity, um, excuse me, specifically in the context of the U.S. So um, this is going to be done by exploring my community's identity um, through a social, cultural, um, political, and historical context um, in order to understand the multi-layeredness of the Khmer Krom American experience. Um, so to put it into more simple terms, um, when a person meets a Khmer Krom for the first time, uh, they'll probably begin to wonder what your identity is because your nationality is Vietnam, or excuse me, Vietnamese, since you come from the nation of Vietnam, but you also identify yourself ethnically as Khmer. But although the Khmer Krom are ethnically Khmer, um, national affiliations with Vietnam adds that complexity and understanding what it means to be Khmer Krom. Yet 
because we've lived in Vietnamese national borders for so many generations, um, there have been cases where Khmer Krom aren't completely accepted by, say, Khmer's from Cambodia because their level of authenticity and Khmerness becomes questioned despite the fact that we have strong cultural and ethnic affiliations with Cambodia. And um, as a result, these ethnic affiliations with Cambodia may also make the um, Khmer Krom be considered um, as outsiders by the Vietnamese too. So to answer the question on why it's so crucial to write about the Khmer Krom for my thesis is um, because our community is marginalized and has become othered by both Vietnam and Cambodia, and even here in the US with each community as well. Um, this is gonna be studied in a small scale, but um, it's a small effort to make you know, our community more visible for um, Americans, as well as um, a reminder to Asian Americans that the Asian American community is very diverse. Um, this isn't only in terms of like national identity, so like your nationality, but also ethnic identity as well. And um, each group is unique in their own way and own concerns. And because of how different our community is, um, it's often sparked a lot of like hostility or like discrimination towards the Khmer Krom community, um, whether that be from the Cambodian community or Vietnamese community. So um, the point of this thesis is to really bring light to our community, who we are, and um, to really inform people about our differences, um, you know, what makes us unique and why we shouldn't be other because of it. Thank you, Callie. I, like you mentioned, it is this is will be to a smaller, you know, crowd, but I commend you. Um, what are you doing is it's a good way for many of the younger generations to contribute in helping the Khmer Krom peoples and to be heard and for people outside who are not Khmer Krom to understand who our people are. So I'm great that you're taking this on and spreading, you know, our Khmer Krom people. Thank With you. writing your honesty thesis statement, I know that you are sharing a survey and I myself took part in that. Can you let us know why you need the survey and where people can find it if they want to take you know, part in this? Yeah, so um, in order to write this honors thesis of mine, um, I had to conduct an independent research study where I can um, collect information from participants to enhance my honors thesis and to really understand the Khmer Krom people and like their experiences as um, an individual and their narrative since coming to the US. So in order to do that, I'm using qualitative data where I'm going to have in-depth interviews with um, five to 10 Khmer Krom folks about their experiences both in Vietnam and in the US. But I'm also using quantitative research as well, which is where I'm going to need a lot of help. So um, to answer your question, um, the survey is going to collect data from at least 30 participants. And I need the survey for my thesis because it, it will help me further explore the Khmer Krom American experience, as well as how their attitudes are in terms of being a part of the Khmer diaspora. Um, even if I reach 30 participants, um, the more people fill out my survey, the better. So um, if you're listening to this, it would be really great if you can take part in my survey so that I can include you or include um, your responses in my uh, thesis. Um, you'll remain anonymous and you'll also um, get put in a raffle to win a Starbucks gift card as well. <laughs> um, so far, I've posted on two Facebook group pages. Um, you can find it in the the Cambodian Professionals Network page, which is a private group, so you'll have to ask to join first um, when you find it on Facebook, or you can find it on Subtle Cambodian Traits as well, on which is also on Facebook. Um, I also believe that when this interview is posted, the link will also be included in the post as well. Yep, I agree. For sure, we will put it in the description so people can have access. You know, I think this is a very smart way to reach out to the Khmer Krom, um, you know, audiences, because a lot of people do watch this video TV series, so I think you'll for sure get some feedback for that. Um, in addition to your honor thesis, um, Callie, about Khmer Krom peoples, you have also joined KKFYC. Can you let us know so far what do you think about the group and what do you think you will get out of building relationships with other Khmer Krom youths? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was actually <laughs> really excited to know that I could be a part of the space. Um, I was always familiar with um, the Khmer Kampuchu Krom Federation since the beginning of college. So I would always go on their website just to see what's going on in terms of like our community back in the homeland. Um, it wasn't until last year actually when I discovered that there was a youth committee and originally I thought I 
couldn't join because I wasn't sure if it was like based in one area and if it was only like limited to that area as well. But I learned later on that um, there are youth who are a part of this group from all over the US. So when I joined, I was actually like overwhelmed with a lot of joy because um, this is the first time I was ever surrounded by people who share the experiences and background as my family and I. Um, as far as building relationships with other Kamaikaram youth, um, I hope that they're um, that that they're folks that I can stay connected with for the rest of my life because I've never really met other people who share the same identity as I do while also being so passionate about advocating for the Kamaikaram people. So I just look forward to working with them um, more and being able to work towards um, a common goal to amplify the voices of the Kamaikaram, whether that be um, in the U.S., back in the homeland, or um, globally. Perfect. Thank you so much, Callie. You'll definitely fit in perfectly well. Um, before we end our interview, did you want to share anything else with our viewers? Yeah, so um, I just want to reemphasize again how great it would be if um, our viewers could take part in my survey. Um, the, su the support in your responses would mean um, a lot to me as I work towards my goal. Um, to my fellow Kamaikaram youth, um, I encourage you to keep expressing your Kamaikaram identity and to also advocate for this community, whether that be um, in the littlest way, like informing your friends about who you are, or even joining a movement like uh, KKYFC in order to further amplify our voices and the issues that our people face. Um, other than that, uh, that, that's really all from me, and I hope that I'll get to meet more Kamaikaram youth in the future. Um, I'm really passionate about maintaining my indigeneity and um, ethnic identity. And I hope that there are others out there who are doing this, the same thing. Okay, again, thank you for your time with me here today, Callie. And I look forward to reading your honor thesis and I look forward to seeing you in person one of these days. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> It was an honor and pleasure to interview Kali. I feel that it is essential for our Khmer Krom students to research and write about the Khmer Krom peoples. We must keep marching forward as the younger generation. We want to spread word and make noise so that others are made aware of the suffering and injustice that is happening to our people in Cambodia Krom. So, Thank you.